you everybody for coming. Um, we have, uh, it's, in, in hindsight, we moved this month's meeting because of Valentine's Day, but then we didn't realize it was conflicting with the New Rochelle School Vacation Week, and so we have three of our board members uh, absent this week, but we have enough for a quorum, so we decided to proceed with the meeting rather than get, uh, get backed up with things. So that explains why um, Thank you. we have a few folks absent, but we'll try to take that into consideration next year when we look at the calendar. Uh, first item on the agenda, I think, is the approval of the minutes. We'll just give a minute for everybody, and if they didn't have a chance to look at it, to take a quick peek. Make a minute, uh, sorry, a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, minutes approved. Uh, let's see, next item. What I did, it has all my agenda. Um, next item on the agenda is the financial reports. I don't think we have anything particular to highlight. We will have uh, the budget committees met, so we'll have a report when we get to the budget committee. So we're doing public Oh, public now? discussion? I thought we put we'll public discussion the, yeah, and allow probably, them to speak. Oh, we should gotcha. move it. I think time. we should move it on the agenda the public discussion down. At the end of the evening. I think that was the request of the public. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Chairman, at what stage do I report usually if I want to say So something? we have the uh, WLS report uh, is, yeah. is actually next. We're here. Oh, oh I'm <laughs> next. Yeah, yeah. You're up. I'm just too anxious, huh? right? Yeah, <laughs> all right, good. Thank you. I'm next. Please. You, believe that? <laughs> you are. <laughs> All right. Excellent no, we, timing. We had our meeting, the first meeting for me, and that was a meeting. Fr Francis, <laughs> could you speak into the microphone? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. On the 29th of, uh, of January. Um, besides the usual uh, housekeeping business, uh, the number of things that, uh, that caught my attention. One was uh, the, uh, the three new members, trustees, were, were sworn in, uh, one from um, Lewisboro and Larchmont and then myself. Uh, so, um, and in that context, I'd like to say that uh, yesterday I was informed that one of the outgoing uh, members died over the weekend, oh, Miss uh, Sue Neal from our uh, neighboring Sue? town. Yeah, she, oh, she, she wow. died over, over the weekend. Uh, oh, I had not had the opportunity to meet her, uh, but uh, that. The the, uh, the wake and the arrangements are going to take place over the weekend. Uh, the wake is tomorrow, and the uh, and the uh, the funeral mass will be at the Immaculate. Uh, she she was a Scarsdale resident, wasn't she, Francis? Uh, Lachman, from what I, oh. I got it. Wow, that's terrible. Mm. Wow. And that she had been uh, apparently for a long time with the uh, with the board since 1994, mm. and she was also president of the board. Uh, vice president of the board, secretary of the board, and she was known to be a strong advocate for the library, and not only for our own district, but also for the uh, WLS as a whole. I have not had the good fortune of meeting her, but uh, she's definitely left uh, a huge legacy on which we, we can build. So that, it has been quite a week, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this week uh, with, uh, with Kathy on, on Sunday, and then uh, Marilyn Maciero, uh, another uh, Rotarian from uh, from uh, Larchmont. Uh, so it's been quite quite, quite a week. So uh, we end this world to to travel. No, no, it's not a destination. Okay. Um, the next thing that uh, the board uh, considered was uh, the, the minutes. Of course, that dealt with issues that were discussed before I came on. But a number of things caught my attention. One was that the, the bylaws for the uh, for the board was approved. There were some revisions that had to be uh, uh, that were discussed last year uh, and were 
improved. Two caught my attention in particular. Uh, one was that they tightened the uh, WS, uh, WLS uh, sexual harassment policy uh, considerably and the privacy policy revision to make it uh, compliant with the New York State labor laws. Uh, so that, that caught my attention. Um, just to refer briefly to my days as the UN Special Envoy, uh, that, that was an issue we were very much absorbed with, the question of sexual harassment. And so it was very vivid to me, so it, it, it caught my attention. Um, the, the second thing was, uh, and so that refers to me, uh, the second uh, revision is about the attendance of the meetings. Uh, there's a revision that, uh, a new provision that when a trustee misses a meeting three times consecutively in a calendar year, uh, that trustee will be politely asked to, to step down. Uh, so that was a message to me. So, uh, <laughs> okay. um, and I think it's, it's a good message. Uh, it's a good provision. Uh, the third one, I, there was a bit of discussion about the new policy regarding the acceptance of gifts. Uh, that was considerably tightened. So um, I, I, I'm not aware of the discussion that went into into that uh, into that revision. But anyway, that that that's one of the uh, one of the revisions. Um, the next substantive item that was discussed, the very briefly, the director of IT, Mr. Rob Kaluori, made a brief overview of the. Uh, his vision of how technology is going to develop within WLS over the next uh, few uh, few years. Uh, although I don't pretend at that time to have understood everything that he was saying, I, there were two things that I wanted to, to be sure of. One is that in the development of our vision of uh, technology, um, that, uh, that this is done from bottom up, that the libraries, the 39, 39 libraries, I had, thoroughly involved in this. It's not something that is imposed from, from the board down. It should be uh, from bottom up. Uh, I was assured that that is the case and that the, uh, the directors of the different libraries were very much involved in this exercise and our own director was in particularly uh, mentioned in that regard. Um, and the second thing is, I said, um, once our vision is clear about uh, the technology that, that this information can be used to solicit funds from our donors. Because I think donors these days have become very savvy and very uh, astute. They would like to know where their money goes to, how it is being used, and so on. So if we are able to explain our vision about how we intend to develop in this area, uh, that will enhance uh, and make it easier for us to, uh, to, 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 to raise money. So those were the two points that were raised. Um, the last thing that uh, I'd like to inform you about is that uh, I think it was decided that the delegation, WLS delegation, would be going to, to Albany uh, probably towards the end of this month uh, to talk to the lawmakers there about, uh, about money. And um, it was uh, suggested that all the new trustees should, uh, should take advantage of that. I already expressed an interest in that even way before this, this uh, discussion was made when I talked to to Terry. So um, I hope when this is arranged that I'll be part of it and I'll let you know how it goes. So that was all uh, for the meeting that we had. Wonderful. That's very helpful. Could I just add yeah. a few things? Um, thank you, Francis. That was a great report. Um, I just want to just take a brief minute to just mention that Sue Neal was really an outstanding woman and I'm truly upset and surprised that she left. Um, I got to know her um, when we would go um, on an annual basis to Albany and um, um, a lobby day, and she was a, a, a really bright and invested in libraries and so involved in the board and really fun, a nice person, and it's a real loss, um, and, you know, she will be missed. And um, just want to remind folks that um, the Westchester Library System our library and all the other libraries um, are migrating to a new online system, and it's fairly imminent. Um, 
um, the, uh, the, the sort of the calendar was on February 1st, we couldn't add any new unique catalog records um, on the 18th, just a few days ago. We, we're, not, uh, we were, we're not allowed to add any bibliographic or item records um, till the migration. Um, on uh, March 10th, there will be no more circulation, um, and that will continue through the 13th of March. And then on the 14th, um, our new Evergreen system will go live. So we'll have this new great system. Um, and there will be some inconvenience. What does that mean, no circulation, like people can't take books out? No, people will be able to take books out. Thank you, Chuck. But it won't be the, um, the easy way using technology. We'll have to use the... Get the cards in the back of the book. Well, you know, we're not going to go back that far. <laughs> but we... Oh, God. I, <laughs> yeah. 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 The Gaylords, you know, the machine. Um, yeah, good God. Um, <laughs> that's kind of scary. Um, but we will have sheets of paper, and we will be putting um, down on those sheets of paper the barcodes of the books that are non-print material that people borrow as well as throwback the library Thursday. cards. <laughs> throwback. It's three days and it's too much of a throwback, you know, for, um, for all of us. But it's what has to be done. It's all 39 libraries and the payoff is we get this great new system and we're very excited about that. And that's it. Wonderful. Thank you both. Um, I'm going to seed my report to the director's report. Oh, actually, maybe I'll have one item. Yeah, I um, So uh, in the minutes, uh, uh, one of the items that we discussed at the last meeting was the uh, soil or core sampling activity that mm -hmm. had been observed in the, um, uh, in the, li the, the library south lot behind the library. Um, so we, we sent, the board sent a letter to um, the Commissioner of Development and to the mayor, I think both of them, and then we copied, I think, the city council. Um, I did speak <coughs> with, the Commissioner of Development did reach out to me um, and basically said, like, look, um, I'd love to, you know, give you information on this, but I don't have any information. You should get in touch with RxR, who sort of, as part of the master development agreement, um, you know, has some opportunity to, you know, do something with those properties. So I did reach out to RxR. Uh, I finally made contact last week. It was a game of phone tag. Um, and, uh, and I spoke to Seth Pinsky. Initially, he said, it's possible that we've done that. But let me check, because I don't know offhand if we've done anything there. And so he came right back to me and said that, that they had done some soil sampling activity. And I explained to him what was in the letter. Like, the thing that we're most concerned about is the parking accessibility for our patrons because we have parking issues already um, and they would be exacerbated if there would be if there was an interruption in, in access to that parking and uh, you know and I have an email from him and he said uh, he came back to me in writing said understand there's nothing uh, currently envisioned to be done with that they don't have anything like happening that was being done to, as a, in, in their what came back from them for ex exploratory purposes um, and if they if there if there's going to be a situation and I have this in an email where that they expect that parking would be disrupted that they would engage with us to discuss how we you know ways to try to you know make it better for our patrons if there was going to be a disruption of that parking so I'll forward the email around to the board members so you can uh, you can have it but um, but uh, that that was uh, sort of the outcome of that uh, discussion so I think the um, the answer is there's nothing happening imminently and they they've pledged that if anything is on the horizon that they'll engage with us to try to help solve the, you know, if, the, if there's going to be an interruption of the parking, to try to help solve the, the issue. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah. Thank I you. Have Thanks. One question. Yeah. Do, do we have an idea of how quickly they move? Like, if they're saying that right now they don't have anything on the table, in six months would that be different, maybe, or a I, year or two? I don't really know. I mean, I think it. I, I, the answer is uh, I don't know. I think it depends okay. on like what you know. Just curious, they have, right? If it would be like a quickly changing thing. Or I don't think it would. I think the discussion I had that if if they thought they were going to do something that they would they wouldn't like wait till it was like imminent that they were going to do something to reach out to us. Like they okay. they you know the the sense that I got was that they understand that this is a big issue for us and they don't want to create like a problem mm -hmm. um, and, and upset people um, so that they would engage. My sense is that we wouldn't get a phone call like, you know, and then the bulldozers show up like a week from now. Like, I think, and, and you know, was, uh, that, that, was the, that was the sense that I got. Okay. Um, 
and I'll forward around the I'll forward around the email. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But anything can happen. Yeah, I mean anything. It's not, yeah, no, I mean that. Yeah, we don't we don't control the lot. That's true. Okay, my turn. Um, this is sort of an unusual night because you heard me earlier reflect about Sue Neal, who was a terrific person. And uh, before I start with my report, I just really basically want to just mention um, that uh, Kathy's um, career was really extraordinary, and she was extraordinary. And it was my pleasure to uh, call her a colleague and a friend, and um, she'll be missed. So um, we're very lucky to have worked with her. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry. Um, um, I'm happy to report that our um, project, uh, the Gateway um, Circulation Area Project, is on the cusp of beginning at long last. As you folks know, you've heard me recount um, far too many times. We, we were lucky enough to get 270000 from the state, and the foundation stepped up in a tremendous way and made the $92,000 match. Well, we're all now ready to begin the project. We expect it will begin um, probably March 6th, and we are hoping to make it as um, convenient as possible to the public and the staff. And uh, we received a schedule uh, today from sort of the uh, one of the vendors, and we're going to review it on, on, on Monday. But it's quite possible from beginning a project to end, we may basically be ready to operate um, in the beginning of April. So we are trying to make this project as tight as possible, just because it'll be less painful for everybody. Um, on March 6th, we will be opening the library instead of 10 o'clock, our Wednesday start time. We're opening at, at 1, only because um, WLS is bringing uh, online training to our library, and we wanted to make sure our staff had the ability to train um, so everybody knows and is ready to be successful. Um, so, so that's sort of related to the circulation area. There is also a possibility we may um, close a portion of the day or day, and we're just looking at schedules now. Um, not because we want to, quite frankly. In my 13 years here, we've closed, um, um, even though we've had a lot of construction, very few days. But this is a project that is in the um, circulation lobby area. It could be a public safety issue. So it's possible we might close for a day, and we'll certainly give you advance notice. Um, but I, I did want you all to, to be aware of that. But we're very excited about this new area, this new circulation desk and um, um, new security gates and a, a security desk for our guards and all. So please stay tuned. We'll give you more updates as we, as we move forward. Um, and with some of our other state grants, they're still percolating. We're waiting for our $160,000 to start renovating the second floor, um, the adult area. We're waiting for a much smaller amount of money, about $9,000, to replace the um, gas boiler at the Huguenot Children's Library. Um, um, I actually did hear from DASNY, the dormitory authority, about our um, economic development grant. And so I'm in the process of responding to, to that. And it's possible we may have $100,000 to use to um, offset some of the costs of the uh, Gateway Project. And yet another grant we're working on, a concept that we talked about at the last meeting, which is through um, the city's downtown redevelopment initiative. The library um, made an entry to be a part of that effort in regards to the creation of a co-working space that would allow our residents to be able to access um, computer resources, training, uh, printers, um, all of that sort of thing, business incubating opportunities. Um, and the, we have had a, um, a preliminary meeting and conversation. It went well. We're waiting for the committee to meet and to hear more. We do have two board members who are on that committee. I know they're going to recu recuse themselves, Yadira, but um, you know you can do some gentle persuasion unofficially. Um, but anyway, so so that's sort of where we stand with that. Um, our great friends, um, their next monthly book sale is. March 1st and 2nd. Their board meeting will be March 6th. Um, the foundation, as always, is, is busy in so many different ways. Um, their next cocktails and conversation meeting will be really a very appropriate one. Um, it's March 14th, and it will feature Dr. Eric uh, Klinenberg, 
and, and our mayor, Mayor Noam Bramson, and they'll be discussing the very important topic of how social infrastructure can help fight inequality, polarization, and the dec decline of civic use. And um, Dr. Klingenberg recently wrote a, a wonderful book about how um, civic culture ne needs to be enhanced, and there are various um, methods that um, can help a community be cohesive and work together, and he particularly cited libraries as a place where um, it's a community hub and where people come together. And um, I didn't read the book, but I did hear a podcast, and um, it's, in my, it's my new new form of reading um, in many ways. And it, it, he was very um, articulate, and his concept is really relevant for what we're doing here. So, so there's that, and of course the foundation is working towards its 25th anniversary gala, which is scheduled for May 9th, and um, the focus will be honoring uh, the partnership for the Huguenot Children's Library's uh, founders, the Leghorns, the Ronins, and the McCabe's, who all, um, together with many other people in the community, helped bring the Huguenot Children's Library back online from a, from a sort of a battered shell of a building to a, um, a popular, successful, functioning children's library. And so those, those three um, couples will be honored at that uh, May 9th um, um, event. It's worth people's support if you know, they have um, time and the ability to participate. Um, on, there's another event that I think is worth mentioning, and that is on April 10th, and that is the, um, uh, the Rotary Club of New Rochelle is celebrating its 100th anniversary. I'm a, a member of that club, is, as is um, Mr. Okilo. He is the president this year. And it's important because, um, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it's 100 years that the Rotary Club has been very involved in the community and has assisted in all sorts of ways. And many of the honorees have a library connection. One is Dr. Lou Ruth Gray, who is being honored for her tremendous career, both in, here in New Rochelle in libraries and, and NYU and her role as an educator. Um, uh, Chris Sellen, who is our foundation president, um, a, a amazing um, president, but also a distinguished career as a city councilor, et cetera. Um, and also Jim Maizano, who's had a very successful career as a county legislator and is now working for county government. I believe he's consumer protection and a Rotarian, Janet De Benedetto. And there's a quote unquote Rotary Hall of Fame, which will involve um, uh, um, Angela Cermelli, uh, myself, um, and really importantly, Kathy Cronin, who was a tremendous Rotarian and gave of herself all the time for all sorts of civic events. So that's something that's also worth your consideration on April 10th. And let's see, um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, for the day that the, just a super, the, the day that you think the library will be closed, I'm sorry, what date? Um, we know for a fact it'll be, um, we'll be closing, we'll be opening later, and that'll be March 6th, and we're publicizing right. that. And then the other day you think is the day that we start the install, we, not. I think it's, I think what we're, we're waiting to uh, formalize the schedule, but it'll probably be the day that we um, start um, demoing the circulation mm -hmm. desk, which means that in that circulation area, we're going to be making a path to the, yeah. um, to the um, Lawton Street entrance where there'll be a dumpster and a, and a space. And it's just going to be, yeah. a, it may well be um, um, problematic. So we may be closing that day. No, no, totally. When we, when we do, um, when we publicize the closing, do we, um, I guess I'm thinking of like the after school tutoring, I'm thinking of like Oasis, like folks that were a full day might, just, you know, so many people come to the library for a variety That's of true. So just, I was trying to think about ways to brainstorm reaching out to stakeholders who might be, you know, not that, not that you won't put signs inside, but is there no. like a listserv or some sort of message well, of flyer that we could, you know. Absolutely. Barbara is, Barbara's ready. Um, and of course we have Nikki Fudge, who's here tonight, who's okay. our social media person. <laughs> Hi there. Um, and we'll employ her talents to, yeah. to get the word out. Um, and, but it's quite frankly, we're not, um, we're not definite that we're going to close. We frankly like to stay open. Yeah. We have had virtually no days that were closed. And and that's wonderful because there are a lot of other libraries that have had work and, you know, we try to find a yeah. way to keep op stay open. But um, but if it when it relates to public safety and Absolutely. that's that's that is an entirely different matter. Absolutely. We've had many construction projects going on where people have sort of had to kind of um, get around, mm -hmm. but if it's in that entrance area, 
that's. I, I agree 100. percent I was just thinking about ways to get. Yeah, no, to make sure. And it, it, it's different than like full day clinic. Yeah, think, like if there's um, key community right. institutions where you want to reach out, right. like. Right. Like no, I think it's a great idea. Centers, tell the Monroe College tutors. You know. Tell the kids to not come for after school tutoring, for example, like just the stuff like like that. Right. Really the housekeeping stuff that's important. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, do we have a? Uh, Personnel report. Um, uh, just that I uh, that I'm not asking for um, a board action, but I'm extremely happy that uh, to announce I uh, shared like with the to board. Be happy. Yeah, I know. And it's extremely happy. Extremely happy is even better, isn't it? Um, uh, um, so we uh, were lucky enough to to upgrade a position as a social service assistant in the library, and um, that that we had an open recruitment and the person we hired was um, an employee who has been working for us for 20 years uh, Denise um, Ramirez link and she's great and everybody she's just a phenomenal person she is going to do a wonderful job and she'll be starting um, in in March she needs to give notice to her employer and we're excited because Denise will have a number of roles one being someone who will provide social service assistance taking the place of one of our, our contract people who went on to bigger and better things. And she'll also help us keep track of our many, many partnerships with social service agencies so we can stay on top of things. And, and, and she's bilingual and she has great customer service skills and um, she's just a wonderful person. So I'm excited. Tom, question. Sorry. Um, are, do we keep, I know you say we're gonna keep track, but do we keep track now of how many, or what are we keeping track of? Like, how many referrals or like we're doing to let's say mental health, youth services, blah blah blah. Like, are we keep are we going to keep track of that? We are. We and 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 and, and we do. Like the senior um, um, services um, benefit clinic, mm -hmm. um, which meets on Fridays. Um, we have statistics on how many seniors use that space, you know, and come in and ask for help, or the Pace Women's Justice Center, or when we host um, the County Health Navigators for people who are looking for um, um, advice and assistance in terms of the Affordable Care Act. So we're, we're uh, the English as Second Language uh, classes, you know, we keep we keep track of that too. But we're we're finding it, it's been problematic because um, there's many organizations that are spread out and having somebody um, both do um, on-site social service assistance as well as manage that will be great and we're also hoping uh, um, um, for that person Denise to be in the community and the great thing is Denise has lived here for upwards of 30 years her kids have gone to school here she's got um, many friends and, and admirers um, she's really a, truly a part of the community and that's that makes it even better where you know even though great people from out of town come and contribute Denise is really a new Rochellean and um, it's it's a good thing and we, we are tracking All right. thank you uh, budget committee so the budget committee has met. It's funny how the budget always sneaks up every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll give, we're not going to present the budget tonight, but I'll give, and um, Edir, feel free to chime in. I'll, uh, I'll give sort of an update on where we are. So we, um, we asked Tom as we had, um, you know, in, in prior years to prepare sort of several different scenarios. So one where we held the budget flat to last year, one where we had the, held the budget to the tax cap which is uh, this year 2%. Um, and then a, th a third scenario, which was like, if you could do within reason what you wanted to do for the budget, what, what would that be? Thinking that it's probably not gonna be flat or down, it's probably gonna be up uh, more than the 2%. So um, uh, Tom, uh, working with the staff kindly, uh, and with Gene kindly with Gene prepared yeah. um, the, uh, those scenarios, and we've met and we've reviewed them. Um, and, and we'll be presenting a formal recommendation to the board at the next meeting. But I think to give a little bit of a preview, uh, we have staying flat is nearly impossible because we have mandated salary increases that we agreed to through the last union contract of 2.75%. So you have that to start and the vast majority of our expense is salary and benefits. I mean, it's, it's you know, out of, our, out of our budget last year, our salaries and benefits is almost $4 million out of a $5.6 million budget. So the vast majority of the cost is, is salary and benefits. So, so you, and, and we can't not pay that increase. We've already agreed to it through a 
collective bargaining agreement. So um, I, we, we, we will not be recommending the flat budget, I don't, I don't think. Um, and staying within the tax cap is also quite challenging given that 2% tax cap and the majority of our expenses tied to this mandated salary increase. Uh, and we also obviously want to be responsive to, you know, Tom does a really nice job of going out to all the staff and really understanding what the needs are. We also try, want to try where we can to be responsive to the, you know, the needs of the community because that's why we're here. And so, you know, we don't have a budget to present tonight, but last year we were up 3.9% year over year, which was uh, the year before we were up six and a half percent and I think we've done it if you look at the history of the last few years we've done a nice job of bringing down the year over year increases uh, my I think we're going to end up recommending something that's probably around the same in line with last year's increase it's probably where we're going to land um, and we, we need to have some further discussions but I did want to give that preview um, and you know there's not unfortunately a lot of levers to pull um, when we're dealing with a budget of this size and the vast majority of its related to salary and benefits that we already have a contract in place. So there's, unfortunately, there's just very little, um, there's just not a lot of items that you can, without impacting what we provide to the community that we can reduce. And Tom and Gene are doing a really good job to identify any opportunities. And there are a few opportunities for savings. Um, unfortunately, they're not huge. Uh, and so we've, I think, you know, we've pared back some of the bigger item, line items the last couple of years. So there's just not a lot of um, cushion in the budget. Um, and uh, the, the one thing that we will be trying to do, we, you know, we've, um, we have a, a and we won't go into it today, but we have a fund balance, which is, you know, organizations like ours under New York State law are supposed to maintain a prudent fund balance in case something goes wrong, a la the elevator that we have, right, <laughs> elevator issue that we have right now. Um, there will be a couple of expenses that are one-time things like the elevator that we will use a little bit of the fund balance for. We're going to suggest that. Um, but very importantly, what we will not use the fund balance for is recurring expenses because that's not prudent fiscal management because then you're going to just end up kicking down the can, you know, kicking the can down the road in terms of having to increase the budget. Um, so we're trying to be very thoughtful about not paying for recurring expenses with funds that should be used for one-time purposes. So. Um, that's sort of the, anything you want to add? No, I think the only thing is next meeting we'll have a couple of different versions for everyone yeah. to see where the savings are between flat, 2%, and what we sort of think is a nice yeah. hybrid of the dream plus just sort of being prudent with the needs and the money. So yes. I think everybody will be able to see, we plan yeah. on sharing those versions for the next we'll meeting. Send it, we'll send it we'll in advance. We'll get yeah, it out in advance. advance. And then that way at the meeting you can, we can vote like it, okay. with education. You know? Great. Great. That's what I was going to ask. Right. Casey. Yeah. yeah, I think we should be able to, um, Dia Dravacy couldn't be here. We need to just connect with her. She's the other right. member of the budget committee. And she's seen the file, but wasn't able to meet with us. So as soon as we do that, we'll get it out. We should be able to get it out in the next okay. week or so. Yeah. Right, because we were good And, and then, then it was just encouraging that you had seen that fund balance webinar because it was helpful. I think it sort of yes. made some of the decisions as to how to actually use it. Um, so that was fun. Yes. Fun with the fund. Um, that's the budget committee report. Uh, Building and grounds committee, Sarah. That's okay, I can lean forward. So at the last meeting, we had mentioned that we received a draft of an RFP back from the CROC Committee, which is the Capital Resource Oversight Committee. So the Buildings and Grounds Committee received that in December. We've gone back and forth making some edits to that. Um, everyone here has that document now, but we still need to make some changes to it. So after we review it, I'm assuming that we can post it before our next meeting. But as far as posting it, where does that get posted? So I'm not familiar with the process. Um, what's happened in the past, Sarah, is that we um, have a list of potential, uh, potential um, responders, and we'll send it to them, and we'll also put it on our website for okay, people. It will be on the website. Yeah. Okay, so, I wasn't sure how that works. Yeah. And so any, anybody that's um, interested will take a look at it, and if, if it's so inclined, they can apply. Okay. submit a bid okay great so it's an RFP for a building assessment for this building and we had mentioned previously that it's been 10 years since a building assessment has been done so that's why we need to do another one a lot has changed mm -hmm. um, another thing Tom and I had met with a landscape architect um, at the Huguenot Children's Library to go over some improvements to honor the founders and the dissolution of the partnership there. 
So we recently got back her proposal. She had a lot of options. It was a really, really robust. Very robust. Proposal. So Tom and I are meeting next week to discuss just how much of that we can do. And, uh, and we're going to, um, of course, work with the staff and share with the board. It's entirely possible um, as the um, round of competitive state construction grants will will once again appear in August of this year. If it's a project that we that we as a body deem appropriate, we could um, we could quite possibly apply for a grant too because there are different elements there and some relate to um, ADA accessibility, which which is. Um, uh, critical in terms of making sure our facilities are available to everybody, no matter what their physical I issues might be. And the last thing that we need to talk about is the elevator <laughs> update. So our elevator still is not working. Um, but Tom had a meeting last week, and it sounds like maybe the beginning of March it will be back up and running. I don't know if you want to elaborate on sure. the findings. Yeah. No, thank you, Sarah. It has been a process, and I appreciate everybody in the community understanding. But of course, our elevator failed um, in a, um, a period of time that was just unacceptable. After less than four years of modernizing, it stopped functioning, and we felt very strongly that this wasn't appropriate and something went wrong and it was certainly not the library's fault. So we pursued a course of action in which we ended up using um, a, a legal counsel and we were able to get uh, the vendor that had won the bid and who had also won the bid to maintain the elevator to agree to bring it back online at no cost, um, which is great. But one of the problems that, um, that perhaps helped cause its dysfunction was, as we had talked about previously, an issue of, um, of water in that, in that pit. And um, the consultant that we had hired to help us, who has done a great job, indicated that he, he thought that we needed to go with a solution that provided waterproofing in that the water wouldn't get into the pit as opposed to dealing with the water once it was in there by using some pumps, et cetera. And so after a kind of an arduous search, we found a vendor who gave us exactly what we want with great recommendations, a lot of work in New York City. Apparently they have this issue too. And so what we're hoping is on, I'll hear tomorrow, I'll get firm, hopefully uh, confirmation that um, the elevator company will come back to New Rochelle, start working on the elevator Monday. Um, once they have finished the fa first phase, emptying out the um, elevator pit and securing the, the car, um, um, our waterproofer will come in and will um, uh, cr create an environment where we shouldn't see water in the future. And then the uh, elevator company will complete their work. And again, we're hoping sometime in early March to bring it back online. But our goal all along has been to bring it online, but not to, not, not to have the, the library and its residents pay the cost of, of, bring, of restoring it to service when clearly it was you know, not the library's fault, and nor should the taxpayers have to pay for it. So I think we've achieved that, you know, you know, and and maybe something more, depending upon what we learn when they remove um, the elevator jack. Yeah, the waterproofing will be our cost, right? Not it will the, be our cost, okay. yeah, because, I it's, mean, it's not their fault. It's not yeah. their fault. Right. That, I can't, I pointed my finger at them in a lot of ways, but that's not a way that I, that, that's not something I can blame them. And that's it as far as that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and I just maybe one mention there so people understand. The, we hired, a, and I know it was mentioned, but I just want to address it directly. We hired an independent consultant to monitor the proposal of the elevator company and the implementation of the fix so that we have somebody else looking at it to make sure it's done correctly. Every step of the way, <laughs> to be honest. To, I know we said that, but I just wanted to reiterate that's it. That's good. Thank you. Um, Community relations. So for community relations, um, I, I just had a question in regards to community relations and our social media. On the budget, is there a line or anything um, allocated for social media expenses? I, I haven't seen that. So in other words, um, for Facebook or Instagram, um, 
promotion or or advertisement, you know, we, it, it works. Their algorithms work so well with targeting the selected audience or families, and you can select by region and location. So, do we have an, a, a budget? We for do that? have some money in um, in the contracted services line for that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I can't really speak to the particulars of how we're doing it. Certainly, our social media coordinator um, could address that along with Barbara Davis. And cool. um, what I think, Daniel, is if you'd like, we could initiate a conversation so that, you know, that we all <laughs> understand what we're doing. And maybe if there's something that we could do that could bring heighten our mm -hmm. social media uh, profile, you know, that'd be good. Okay. So I'll, I'll shoot you an email, Tom, so yeah. we can kind of coordinate that. that. Um, with Barbara and, uh, and social media. So uh, some updates uh, from our community relations department. Um, our Black History <coughs> Month programs uh, have included a wonderful concert, per percussion discussion, uh, which was held on February 10th. Uh, this was immediately followed by a presentation by award-winning children and book illustrator Brian uh, Collier. His excellent exhibit is on view until February 28th. After the presentation, they had a book signing and a reception. And then coming up this weekend, the annual African Dance and Drum Performance, which includes students of all ages. Of, uh, the six-week African Dance classes will take place on Saturday at 2 p.m. and on Sunday at 3 p.m. We They have a Mount Vernon Interfaith Choir performing a gospel concert, so definitely check that out. Uh, during this February vacation week, uh, despite the uh, snow and the cold weather, uh, they've been doing very well. Uh, they've reported an excellent attendance at the uh, varied uh, programs and the children's room. Despite the snow, over 100 people attended Wednesday's live show with a circus performer. So that's pretty good. So we're doing something very well with getting the word out there. Free tax help. I drove by the other day and I saw a line outside the door. Uh, volunteers have been seeing uh, record numbers of people seeking uh, assistance. Uh, our 12 trained preparers have been help helping about 50 people each Tuesday and each Thursday. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, they introduced two new adult programs in January, Zumba and Mahjong. Both have met with success. And coming up on the horizon, just a few special events of many. April 7 is Read 6. 50, the popular and excellent readers forum will be held in the theater and have a theme, My Library, for the library's 125th anniversary and the start of National Library Week. They'll be conducting a special week of children's programs, April 28th to May 5th, May 5th, to celebrate Children's Book Week and the library's 25th anniversary. Author visits, a special Our Children Are Artists reception, entertainment, crafts, and more are on tap. Uh, this is a tribute to the former children's department head and the late Louis Sonnet. And it's being made Louise, possible. Louise. Sorry, sorry. Louise Sonnet. And it's being made possible by her children. And the New Rochelle Public Library has been selected as a host to host a major science exhibit in search of the Earth's secrets, which will be in the lobby this summer and the focus of our summer reading theme, exploring the seven seas. The exhibit includes an inflatable vessel which will be a library, will, which will be on the library green a uh, few Saturdays, as well as an interactive kiosk, which large floor map on the bottom of the ocean, of the bottom of the ocean, and a wide range of activities. We hope that uh, they have participants of the Boys and Girls Club, the Girl Scouts, and other organization, as uh, teen docents will be trained to guide guests through the exhibit. And one thing I want to put out there is um, the county put out a wonderful uh, Facebook post uh, I work very well with Dr. Demia Harris on the Youth Bureau. It's National um, Observance of National Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Uh, the Youth Bureau in the county has worked with uh, several cities and their youth bureaus to train trainers. Uh, Nourisha was one of them selected, uh, Mount Vernon and other areas, Greenberg, I believe. Uh, to train uh, individuals on two specific curriculums. Uh, they're going to be going out there and reaching out to our young people about it. Reach out to the Youth Bro for more information on that. I know they have a program. It's being funded by the Invest in Kids. And, um, and that's it. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. I, I would just like to very briefly highlight the fact that we, we do have um, a teen assistant who's, who's new, Luis Perseno. And um, along with our teen librarian, Ken Petrilli, 
and um, Barbara Davis, we are having ongoing programs on a daily, on a daily basis. I think Monday is open mic uh, day for our teams where they get to um, uh, perform in different ways and photography and art and um, movies. And so it's, we're really starting to see more and more activity. It's, it's really encouraging. It's great. And mm -hmm. the board supported this position a few years ago and we really feel like we're starting to to really um, to make something successful out of it. Yeah, That's and I, I, I know um, Mr. Briseno, Briseno. Uh, Briseno for some time and working different capacities actually when he was actually a student and he volunteered for a lot of activities with the bid and the library um, and he has worked with many and different age groups and backgrounds um, from the Day of the Dead event that they have here to other things. So. Um, he's really invested. He really is trying to be innovative. I had a conversation with him, and um, I mean, he's in it to win it, and he's really he trying is. to uh, be creative. And Tom, I did see your, your email, um, and we'll connect on, on that okay. as, as well. And I also told uh, him about um, there's going to be a ready training, which is the workplace social emotional attributes that can be used in that. So I got to give him the dates. Uh, I worked with Tom Kleiner from the WIB on that. Um, and it's a great curriculum and training. I think it would be great to have the, the library as a site that provides this uh, engagement good. activities and get them, get them prepared for summer youth employment, which comes up, and so we can, they can be ahead, ahead of the game. So it'll be awesome. That sounds great. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, I think the, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, Daniel just reminded me that, um, of something that I forgot to mention when I was giving my brief, that WL has decided to come out with a monthly newsletter on an experimental basis that, that would give information to the libraries and what is happening uh, at headquarters and what are the issues they're mm -hmm. dealing with. Um, they, they want to try it out for, for, for about six, seven months and see how it goes. And that will also help us trustees <laughs> to report uh, to, um, to our respective uh, libraries and what was happening and what the thinking is at headquarters. So can That's the community great. sign up to receive those newsletters? Uh, I'll have to find out. I mean, it's just been announced, and I, I just have one first copy of it uh, the other day, which I, uh, I'll, I'll circulate. Uh, okay. if it's, I should have done it, but I just, just didn't remember to do that. You get to have one mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. Just yeah. kidding. Um, maybe two. Maybe two. Yeah. Um, uh, Finance Committee, I don't think we have a report tonight. We need to meet, um, but I don't think we have a report tonight. Um, I think all the members of the Needs Assessment Committee <laughs> are Correct. not Assessing here you. tonight, so I don't, I don't, there's no update, nobody's provided me well, an update. Except Oops. that the RFP for the Needs Assessment did, did go out to vendors as well as being, um, the RFP is now currently on our website, too. Okay. And we've gotten a few responses, um, and I've directed those responses to the committee. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, personnel Committee, do we have anything? Nope. No. Uh, policy committee, do we have anything? Nope. Uh, special projects, do we have anything? Who's special projects these days? I don't remember. Whitney. I think, I think it's Whitney. Whitney. Okay. So that's, no. Yeah, and we're, oh. we're still waiting on this um, very exciting sculpture garden option. The foundation has really taken over um, the possibility of, of being able uh, to recreate the, the um, memorial highway courtyard as a sculpture garden and also making the space more attractive creating a space that's um, far more friendly to, um, um, to folks that had, are differently abled. So that, th there's a grant that's been submitted to Daniel, I think it's a, the agency that you were successful with, uh, um, Impact, yes. Impact yes. 100. So the foundation has applied for money to Great. make that project happen. Um, but so we're waiting to hear where we Fingers go. Fingers crossed, go. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's 90,000 right there. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, I think we will go then to, unless there's anything else on the board, we'll go to the public session. Okay. Uh, Lourdes Font. Oh. Oh. Wonderful. Uh, Dorothy Oliver. Okay. Uh, Marjorie Sachs. <laughs> I think the you mic have to is come here. up here. Do we need to get past? Um, I think Good. you found that. Right on the uh, podium. That's 
Vincent at Morgan Stanley Training. So I, I um, just wanted to say something in honor of Uh, let us discuss that. Okay. Um, and I guess you've heard me say this before, and many of us say this before, that we also, we share your concern about the parking. We also have a real concern, and we'll continue to speak on this concern, <coughs> about um, the potential for the library to be surrounded by high-rise buildings. You've already seen, I think, there's 10 or 15 projects already going on in the city. These parking lots are, vul this, the library is vulnerable to these parking lots. Not sure what the status of these parking lots is, um, but I would really encourage you to advocate for the protection of the library from any high rise buildings in the near vicinity. I think that's really important to, to do that, maybe even more so than the parking. Um, I know that the parking is important, but I, I think that building, and when buildings are built, they have to supply a certain amount of parking. So to me, the biggest, to, to us, the biggest issue is to not have this library surrounded by high-rise buildings. So whatever you can do to advocate with that. And even though Mr. Aragon referred you to RxR, I believe that Mr. Aragon and the mayor have power when it comes to RxR. They have political power. RxR has signs up saying we're for the community and let's, let's make them really prove that by not hurting this library. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, George Latimer. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. I'm George Latimer, Worcester County Executive. I stopped by just to catch a little bit of your agenda, see what kind of issues are on your mind, and to see if there's anything that you're working on that interacts with county government. Uh, there may not be anything at the moment, or there might be something that warrants a conversation, if not now, then later. But uh, every night I try to be in some corner of the county listening and learning if I can, because we've got many issues that affect, uh, you know, communities large and small. We're working right now trying to deal with the Con Edison moratorium issue, which uh, may be impactful down here in downtown uh, New Rochelle. But uh, I just wanted to make the offer that if you'd like to follow up at any point in time, feel free to the, to the head of the board. and was to Tom, whom I know in his capacity, and uh, to try to be as helpful as we can. Obviously, you have Terry Clements and Damon Marr, who represent, you know Damon real well, uh, in the county government, but uh, I wanted to at least be here myself personally uh, and extend an offer to work with you as you see fit. Thank you. Thank you for taking George. the time to come see us. Yeah. Appreciate the offer. Uh, I think, uh, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? I will make the motion to adjourn. I will second the motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.